Uh, hey, I want to say thank you and congratulations to our seniors. Okay, I'm just going to be kind of panning you because I'm talking to y'all today. Okay, for some of it. Uh, but I would like to say congratulations to our seniors, not necessarily for graduating, but for, uh, I would say, pulling one of the most ingenious senior pranks I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, 2020 has been a prank and a half, so it's, we're, we're done now. Y'all can stop. 20. You know, it really wasn't that funny in first service either, was it? <laughs> Y'all are supposed to help me with these jokes, okay? Man, that's, that's horrible. Um, I did want to take a few minutes today to talk to you, uh, seniors and parents and adults, because this is all a group effort. Um, I'm going to talk to the seniors because I hope, I hope you will consider something as I talk today, uh, as you prepare to move into this next chapter of your life. And by the way, this won't be the last chapter you move into. There are several chapters of our life. Am I right? I mean, how, what chapter are we on right now? I, I don't know, but... But this is the next chapter of your life, and I, I, I'm, I'm excited for you. There's so many exciting things ready to go, and um, everything's going to be brand new. Something's going to be a little scary. Um, but my hope is that as you move into this next chapter, you will consider something that I think is going to be miraculous. Um, it's something that from this moment on, you're going to have that you can for once now and for all call your own all right it's um it's your faith that you're going to be taking with you and i will tell you that your faith has been growing for quite some time now and this faith that you take with you it has the potential to introduce you to some things that i believe are quite miraculous some miraculous things you will be able to see when you live a life of faith. So I'm going to come back to you in just a second, but for now I'm going to talk to some of our adults, more adults than you are at this point. And I'll say to you, congratulations. Good job. You helped launch a whole other senior class. They're still alive. Yes, all right? Um, what I want to congratulate you on is that this is a huge responsibility you've undertaken. You know, a lot of you have known these students since they were kids, since they were really little. Whenever we got here, they were sophomores, barely sophomores. And back then they knew everything, right? I wish I was 16 again and knew everything. You know, you have helped these students grow. You've, you've helped them find a faith. And, and this is a huge responsibility because as adults, as as, as you know, people who this is our life, this is our church, these are our family, you know, this is our family circle, we have a huge responsibility not just to, to talk about faith, but to share our faith with the, with the students and the kids that grow up here. You know, we aren't just supposed to talk about it, but we're supposed to show them what we believe with our life, what we believe. And we are showing them something. Remember that old African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. I remember people pushed back against that at one point because it was said by a Democrat, right? But it's a very, it's an old proverb. And there are people that you have grown up with in this room who have had significant impacts on you because they were people of faith. Or they taught you things that you may not have learned from your parents. Or the things that you desperately needed to learn and they happened to be there at that right moment. We are all helping to raise each other's children. How many of you were disciplined by somebody in your church when you were a kid? I mean, how many of you were yelled at? You know, I, I was. I had several mothers growing up. Today we probably do the same thing. We just do it more quietly so the parents don't hear us. But we all need that. We need to know the social boundaries and, and we need help because we all are the body of Christ. But we are all communicating something to these kids, to our students, and we are communicating what we believe. And we are either showing them our belief, our confidence in God, and our strength in our faith, or we are showing them fear, discouragement, anxiety, and they're going to see your belief through your actions. 
They're going to see how you respond in uncomfortable situations because we need to remember most of the most of life is uncomfortable church they're going to see how you believe and what you believe if you're willing to put yourself out there and join them in their education here and join them in a crazy song here or there they're going to be willing, they're watching you and how you live your life. They're going to see your belief lived out in your actions, in your choices. They're going to hear it in your words. They're going to read it on your social media posts. If they were to look at your social media posts, are they going to see what you believe? Or are they going to see what you're afraid of? What they learned from us is going to be taken with them and incorporated into their walk, into their actions, into their responses, into how they love one another. Now, sometimes parents and kids, man, we begin great, don't we? We begin so well. We teach them the information. We're working with them. And um, you know, sometimes it just is a perfect moment and it kind of culminates in something like this. something man sometimes it just comes together doesn't it and she has seen that a time or two hadn't she and she I mean I don't know if she's reading but she knew she had to turn the page because they're watching us they're watching you and sometimes we get it right and I know we have such high hopes for our students but it does not end there our job is as parents and friends and relatives is not over. Even if they're not here and off to school, it's not over. Our faith is still being noticed. And we still have the opportunity to show something miraculous to these students. Now, seniors, here's the truth. Here's the truth. Our faith is being developed from the moment we're born and you've been taught the information. A lot of you have the information. Some of you can probably still remember those psalms and those scriptures you learned as a child. But I want you to remember this. Information is not enough. Okay, Information is great, and we need it, and we need to pursue it, but it is not enough. That is the truth. The truth is how you begin to live out the things you've learned. That is what's the most important. Information on us by itself, all alone, is just information. And we got a world of information. And what good is that doing for any of us? We got Wikipedia. <laughs> it's, a lot of times it's great. But we've got lots of information at our fingertips. And that, is that helping our fears and our anxieties lessen? Information is not enough. It's what you do with the information you've learned that is what's important. It's about how you live. And now think about it. You've seen people in this church family wrestle with their faith. You've seen it. And some people, man, they, they, they get it right. And you've also seen how some people get it very wrong. Now, if you ever get to that point, when you go to church... And you say, I'm not going to go to church because of the hypocrites. I want you to remember something. It's okay. Because once you go, there will be one more. Because at any moment, 
we are all in that same boat. And their faith is not your faith. The faith of the people that, that, that get it wrong, it's not your faith. This faith is your faith. You've seen people sometimes get it great. But this, from this moment on, that faith that you are now able to claim, it is your own faith now. And the life that you choose to live, it's going to be a direct result of the faith that you choose so several times, I'll get right to the point. Several times in Scripture, we see this phrase that says, um, your faith has healed you, or um, your faith has made you well. And sometimes when you read Jesus, you see that, that faith precedes miracles. Remember, a miracle is a glimpse into, into God's world. It's a glimpse into what God lives with each and every day. And, and, and a, a miracle is just, just a peak into God's domain, the kingdom of heaven. And there is a miracle to that, that we can actually, is it ironic? The miracle is being able to see a miracle. But, but the miracle is the faith that we claim and choose to have and live. And that allows us to see some miraculous things. So two quick stories. One is in Luke 7 and one is in Mark chapter 9. I'm going to be done here in just, just one minute. So in Capernaum, there's this... Um, can you all still hear me? No? I'm not on? Okay. All right. I'll stay here. So in Capernaum, there's this centurion, and uh, he loved God. He loved the Jewish people. In fact, he was part of their community, and he actually built them a synagogue. He loved them, and, and there you go. Build an ark. I hear that's all I think of when I hear the. Okay, so in Capernaum, there's this man, um, and and he loved God, and so one thing that he wanted to do was to help the Jewish people. And so when his servant got sick, these people, you know, they are trying to bring Jesus to him. But whenever Jesus is halfway there, well, let me just read it for you. This is what it says. He was not far from the house, Jesus. Whenever the centurion sent friends to say to him, "Lord, don't trouble yourself." For I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him and turning to the crowd, followed him saying, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the man who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. This is a man who, whose faith is confident. He is sure. He knows what he believes. He doesn't even need for Jesus to come. He just needs him to say the word. That's how faithful this man is. And Jesus was amazed. You need to realize God still is amazed. He can still be amazed. If Jesus came and he was amazed... This man amazed Jesus because of his faith. That's a miraculous moment in and of itself. And then we have Mark chapter 9. And that this man is suffering from possession. Uh, he's having a really hard time because his life has not turned out the way he wanted. In fact, his child has never really been normal. Ever. And so he tries to get the apostles to heal him. They can't do it. Jesus shows up. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It's often thrown him into the fire or the water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. And immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. So this is my point. A lot of times we go around thinking and hoping we're this centurion with this amazing faith that cannot be shaken. We want to believe that when the going gets rough, we'll just pray and believe. Now, first thought is God's going to take care of it. But truth is, I think often, more often than not, if you're anything like me at all, you end up being like this frantic father who's completely lost control of this situation. He is at the end of his rope 
and his faith has suffered because his situation is just out of control and Jesus cut on to his words did you see that if you can I mean, do you have any idea who you're talking to how many times had this man been let down in his life to the point where he wasn't sure anymore and it was as if faith was his last resort prayer was his last resort it was this last ditch effort to find a miracle and so Jesus what he does is he show them in that moment that anything is possible for him who believes anything is possible everything man so this is my point I'm trying to get to is that your faith that you have now it's yours it's not anyone else's faith it is your faith it's yours to grow it's yours to develop it's yours to build but you need to remember this faith is not an exit strategy okay faith is not something that should be it's the last thing that enters your mind God if you are having problems believing God's going to help you with your unbelief all you have to do is ask him but he still wants to show you some miraculous things so don't let your faith and prayer and your relationship with God be the last thing that comes into mind whenever everything goes south because at one point it's probably going to it's not an exit strategy it is an entrance strategy your faith should be in every situation you have it should be the very first thing you lean on and remember and act on knowing that God has you that he's you know got your back that he's not surprised by anything that he's telling you don't be afraid that should be your entrance strategy into every situation you come across your faith will guide you your faith in Jesus Christ will guide you it will lead you so let your life show others that there is more to this world that can be seen let your life show others your faith and your love because I believe the more faith you have the more of a life you live by faith the more contagious it will be and the more miraculous things God will be prepared to show you I'm going to have the praise team come on up and we're going to sing here in just a moment but I want you everyone in this room as you kind of have this moment of a response I want you to ask yourself very seriously what is my faith where am I and am I struggling with my belief and if you are make this a moment of your declaration and frantic prayer to God I do believe help me overcome my unbelief because we're still helping these students and students you are shaping even the next generation but you don't even realize it there are little kids looking to you they're doing their hair like you they're dressing like you they think that you are a person of faith how are you going to begin to use the faith that you have to help shape even the next generation let's stand together i'm going to pray and then we'll sing heavenly father thank you so much for this day help us to be people who believe people who live a life of faith so that others can be uh, living that as well lord i know that our faith is is caught by others help us to be people who will show it and be glad to 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 just show people um, the trust we have in you we love you and uh just hear our hearts this morning in jesus name amen Savior. He